Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream. I'm going to do your August the 17th spiritual principle a day in a meditation. How are you doing this morning? I hope you're doing well. It's early yet, but today is going to be a great day. The title of the meditation is Willingness to Change. When we take the serenity prayer seriously and really consider what in our lives we do have the courage to change, we find that our ability to shape our lives is limited more by our willingness than by anything outside ourselves. Now that comes from our Living Clean book, chapter six, Finding Our Place in the World. We say the serenity prayer so often in in a meeting that it's easy to do it by rote, without intention or commitment. Sometimes I forget it's actually a prayer, one member reflected. It was only when it was suggested that I say it outside of meetings as a prayer for willingness that I began to connect to it, to really use it to help me in a moment of strife confusion, or indecision. It helps me get real, another member offered. I need to know what I can change before mustering up the courage to do it. Most of the time, it's me that's standing in my own way, not my past, not my upbringing, or my culture, or institutions, or even other people, just this addict. Change is hard because it's often painful. Our current level of discomfort is familiar, at least. Trading it in for the unknown seems risky. We fear the pain will be worse on the other side of a decision. Who wants to experience rejection or failure? Or what if we succeed? Then there may be a slew of new responsibilities to deal with. Will we be able to manage those? In the simplest terms, these are fears that limit our capacity to grow. Change is even harder when we view the world as hostile to us, when we listen to the voice in our heads telling us, you can't or don't do it. Ignoring that voice and practicing willingness to change the things we can and then taking an action toward that change we want to make requires a lot. We have to simultaneously accept where we are right now and be willing to take a risk. There are lessons to be learned no matter how things turn out. A bonus of NA fellowship is that we get to report back and share those with each other. I'll carefully consider what I have the power to change my life right now. Instead of cursing the dark, I will pray for willingness to change the light bulb. Sometimes it is that simple. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the serenity prayer. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change. The courage to change the things that we can and the wisdom to know the difference just for today. Please and thank you. Why do I say the serenity prayer the way that I say it? I said it a little bit slower today because of the topic of our meditation being that many times we just say it as rote. That's what we do at the beginning of our meetings, sometimes at the end of our meetings. And it, it has meaning, but it's just for us, right? No, 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 no. Matter of fact, that, that serenity prayer, that is just really a portion of it. 
what we say is just a small portion of the serenity prayer. It's much longer than that. And I would challenge you to just Google the serenity prayer and find the whole prayer. What we say is just a portion of it and a beautiful portion, right? But our tendency is that we only say it in the meetings. We we somehow think it's an NA thing or a 12-step thing. No, (laughs) actually it's not. It's a whole prayer and the author is supposedly unknown, but the world loves it. Okay. So what does it mean to you? I can tell you what it means to me. When I say the serenity prayer, I am reminding myself that some of what I need to get through this situation is not going to just come from me. God grant me. It's going to come from God, right? And it's a plea. It's a, I'm, I'm, I'm asking. It's a request. Help me, right? Help me to be calm, to be serene, to practice spiritual principles in all of my affairs, to have acceptance. Grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. Oh, what else is there? When, when there's something that you have absolutely no control or power over, what else is there for you to do? Well, okay, I'll tell you what I might do. I might stew about it. I might gossip about it. I might scream about it. I might cuss about it. I might, it doesn't matter what I might do. It's not going to change anything in reality. It's not going to change the situation. It's not. And most of the time it involves another human being. So it definitely is not going to change what they do or do not do. Oh, they might understand that I'm upset with them, but that is not going to change typically what they do or do not do. So me spouting off at the mouth is just me showing that I have some growing up to do, that I'm still thinking I have some control. And I'm in my rabbit brain running races Around and around and around and around, spinning the situation, going back over it, rehearsing my lines in my mind again about what I should have said and what I'm going to say, rather than just accepting that this is something that I cannot change. Now, here we go. Let it be something that I can change. You see how powerful this serenity prayer is? I know you do. Let it be something that I actually can change. And what do I do? I don't know who they think is. That's not That's not my responsibility. I'm not doing that. Mm. Looking at my watch. It's due in two hours, and I still haven't even started the three-page paper with five references. It's due in two hours. Uh, Let me take the deduction of 10% because it's going to be at least a week late. But I have the ability to change that situation. So what the point I'm making is let it be a situation that you can change and what we tend to do is we lack the willingness or the courage. The courage to change the things that I can. A lot of times we don't want to change the things that we can because it means that there's going to be possibly some confrontation, some conflict, some telling the truth in no uncertain terms, facing, how about that, facing the truth, that I'm a procrastinator, that I can be lazy sometimes 
I don't have the courage to change that. <laughs> That's why I'm asking God. God grant me the courage to change things that I can. That's the solution. Ask for help from God. Your higher power. And the wisdom to know the difference. So much of the time I spent trying to change the things that I absolutely had no power over. And backing away or shying away or shrinking back cowardly from changing the things that I actually had the authority to change. Now, that's my story. I can give you specifics all day long. I can tell you story after story after story. I have so many experiences that validate what I just said. But that's not the point today. The point today is what are your experiences like that validate this? See, because a lot of times I didn't have the willingness the willingness to change. I didn't have the willingness. It was too involved. It was going to be too deep. It was going to take too much time. I was going to have to drive too far. I was going to have to stay up too long. I was going to have to work too hard. I was going to have to go another mile. I was going to have to answer another question. Never forget my first sponsor. And I'm not very crazy about her. And she was a gossip and she 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 couldn't hold water, right? Uh, my first sponsor, I never got to do my fifth step with her. I refused. I refused to do my fifth step with her because I knew all of my other sponsees business, right? She I was one of the people that she actually when she needed help, it was almost like I was sponsoring her. When she needed help, she would come to me and she would go over her plan on how to deal with a certain person, a sponsee. And I would know everyone's business and have to act like I didn't know anything because she was always spilling the beans, right? Let me tell you the one thing this woman did for me I mean, later on in life, she did many other things and we're friends today. But let me tell you, during that time, my first sponsor was sponsoring me. The one thing that she actually did for me, she caused me to understand that I hate to be questioned. I hate when people question my intelligence or my decisions, or my behavior, she revealed to me that I was not very humble at all. That's the one gift. That is the one gift that woman gave me. I was about to divorce my first husband, and other people had met him, and other people loved him. He wasn't in recovery, just a really good, kind guy. And I didn't think I deserved such a sweet spirit, right? And I was doing everything I could to sabotage, push this little angel away from me so that I could be reckless in the rooms of recovery, right? And I remember leaving uh, the meeting that I was uh, chairing and we were walking out to my car. And she said, so what's going on with you for real? So while I'm going through a divorce, <laughs> she my sponsor, right? I'm going through a divorce, if you must ask. <laughs> uh, I w- I'm telling you, I, I rarely shared any of my business with her because I was too busy listening to hers. And if I called her to share something, it was going to get switched around to what was going on with her, right? So... I'm telling her I'm going through divorce. What do you think is wrong with me? (laughs) 
right? It's, I think she knew I was going through a divorce. I hate to think that my first sponsor didn't know I was getting a divorce, but she asked me what was really going on with me. And I told her, I'm, I'm filing for a divorce. And she looked at me in my eye. She said, why? Why? Just tell me why. That's exactly what she said. Why? Why? Just tell me why. And almost the same emotion that I had then is happening now. There was this dead silence and my eyes filled up with tears. And even though I had all of these reasons why, in that moment, another human being challenging me to be able to explain my position And I couldn't even make the sense make sense. I could not make my nonsense make sense. It silenced me. It utterly silenced me. And I said, I don't know all the reasons why. But if I'm going to live, I need to let him go. She said, long as you know the reasons why. If you don't know the reasons why, maybe you shouldn't get a divorce. But if you know the reasons why, there's nothing I can say. And I drove away with these tears in my eyes, barely able to drive, knowing that the divorce was important for me. Because for whatever reason, my mental illness was just so intense at that time that all I could think about was not living. What's the point? The point is that sometimes we're challenged to have the willingness the courage to change the things that we can. So I'm asking you, like my first sponsor asked me, on those things that you are refusing to change and you know you have the power to change them and you're miserable as a result of not having the willingness to change them, why won't you change them? Go to that. Figure that piece out. What is it about that situation, that person, that topic that has you paralyzed with fear? Now, I took a long way around to get to that point. What is paralyzing you with fear? Or how is fear paralyzing you? And if you can get to that answer, you will find that you will start unlocking the willingness to change. Family, my name is Mighty Stream and I am an addict. I've enjoyed your company this morning. I hope you have a beautiful day on purpose. I know I left you heavy with a lot to think about. But, you know, after all, if we can't do it here, where can we do it? We do this together. Have a beautiful day on purpose. I intend to talk to you tomorrow.